The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. A lot of times people say, well, it's easy for you, but um, where I come from, it was never easy. I know what it's like to take the soda bottles down to the store to get the deposit to get a half a loaf of bread. So don't come talk to me about easy when we started out. But we took God's word and we believed it. And we actually said to ourselves, which sounds selfish, but it's not. We said, if we're the only ones that God's word's gonna work for, it'll be us, because we're gonna believe this. Hallelujah. I don't care what other people are doing, we're gonna believe his word. Hallelujah. That God's word is speaking to us personally. We're not gonna let it move past us and go to the guy behind us. We're gonna grab a hold of it. Can you say amen? amen. So go with me now, if you would, to the book of Deuteronomy. Page 292, if, if you have the same Bible as me. Deuteronomy 28. And I know for many this, they push off that it represents Israel. But the church, not because I'm trying to replace Israel, because I don't believe in that, but the church is now his body. Remember this, he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, they then gave him power to become the sons of God. So there's a lot of things in the word that were under the law, but have been fulfilled under grace. And these blessings still operate in our life. Can you say amen? amen. He says, yeah, and it shall come to pass if you'll hearken diligently the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which are commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Which, if you realize that, we actually, as new, believe, as, as new creations in Christ, we seated together in heavenly places. Yes. Think about that. So we actually are set above all the nations. We, we walk in the earth here, but we are seated with Christ in heavenly places right now. All right, I'll try this church over here. We seated with Christ in heavenly place. Somebody said, I'm not, I'm sitting in the river church. No, no, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. All things are under your feet because all things are under his feet. How can I be seated with Christ and everything be on top of me? You ask people, how are you doing? Well, under the circumstances, not that good. Well, who put yourself under the circumstances? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Do you realize where you are? Do you realize what he did for you? See, you have to personalize it. All these blessings should come on you and will overtake you. That's like driving down the 75 and being overtaken. Are you with me? Who's ever had a huge semi overtake you on the road? Did you feel it? Did you feel that it took, overtook you? Mm -hmm. Well, when the blessing comes and overtakes you, you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Somebody said, I think a blessing overtook me. It didn't. You'll feel it. You'll go, a blessing just overtook me. Hey, come on. If you hark on the voice of the Lord your God. That's why every day we've got to listen to what he tells us to do. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. 
We don't listen to what the TV tells us. We don't listen to what outside forces tell us. We've got to follow the Holy Ghost and do, I cannot drum this into you any stronger. Those that will obey the Holy Ghost, that will follow the Holy Ghost, the Lord will sustain you. If you don't believe that, when you get to heaven, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego how God sustained them. Ask Daniel, who spent a night in the lion's den. God looks after his people. I was talking to preacher, uh, what was it, yesterday? And I said, you know, I have a crazy feeling that the Lord actually loves me more than the ministry. I really do. I think, I think he loves me more than the ministry. Because like things in the ministry, I have to pray over. Things that I want or need, I just think about and it happens. I think, how did that happen? I just thought about that and it happened. I didn't even say anything. I didn't even tell my wife. I just thought, yeah, that'll be great. And then it happens. And I thought, how come in the ministry I have to pray over some things? You know, we need to do this. Okay, let's all pray about it. So I'm going to realize, I think he loves me more than the ministry. Which you, which you think, that, that's really what his covenant is with you personally. Blessed will you be in the city. That means in the city of Tampa. Amen. Amen. In St. Petersburg, in Clearwater, in, 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 in Lakeland, in whatever city you find yourself in. Blessed shall you be in the field, in Polk County. You'll be blessed in the field. I walked outside yesterday. I've never seen so many ravens on my property. I've never seen. So I walked out and said, just to make sure you boys are working and you know where the, where the church is and you bring provision. Yeah, if, you, if you're lounging around here, yeah, I don't want you on my property. And I said, if, you, if any raven here is working for one of the alphabet agencies, you need to get off the property now. <laughs> I actually went out and talked to them. They all listened to me, boo. You know, they were a little nervous about me, but you can understand. (laughs) As long as they bring provision, they're fine. They're welcome. Amen. Amen. I don't want lazy ravens around my house. (laughs) Some of you need to lighten up just a little bit here today. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket in your store. That means, you know, your basket in your store is where you eat out of. That means God will even feed you. Say this often to me, my basket is blessed. Not basket, basket. <laughs> After all these years, I've been trying to teach you, it's basket, a basket, my basket. <laughs> basket. <laughs> like a sheep, ba- basket, a basket. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So when you come in, you're going to get blessed. And when you go out, you're going to be blessed. Now, why is this important? Because if you don't have that attitude, you're looking to come in and be cursed and go out and be cursed. It's the way you carry yourself. It's what, it's what you are expecting. I'm not expecting a Monday where I'm not blessed. Regardless of what comes our way. I'm not expecting a Tuesday where I'm not blessed. I'm not expecting a Wednesday. You think, you think God gets up and looks, well, he doesn't sleep, so he doesn't get up. I mean, he never lies down, you know what I mean? But you think God suddenly looks at the news and freaks out? You think God looks at the news, grabs his throne and grips it tight and goes, oh, myself. Because who would he refer to? Uh, Oh, myself. What am I going to do? 
And he looks around and it looks at Gabriel and, and, and he says, Gabriel, and Gabriel shakes his head. I've, I've never seen anything like this. Just every day when thoughts come your way, you just say to yourself, I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Somebody said they kicked me out. It doesn't matter, I'm blessed going out. (laughs) Somebody said they didn't want me there. It's okay. I'm blessed still going out. Amen. Blessed of the city and I'm blessed of the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. So you just have to make up a little rhyme for yourself and just chant that, you know, if you've got to get a little beatbox going, just get your, just get your wife, you know. <laughs> and then you just, and you go, keep it up, honey, and then you just get the beat going. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make your own beat. Somebody said, I don't hear any music. Make some. I thought I was going to break out in some kind of a break dance. I could just just feel the thing. (laughs) Yeah. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's a lot of ways to run. If you, if you feel you scared, you should see your enemies. What does that mean? The moment your enemy comes at you, God will deal with your enemy. That means you won't have to lift a finger. You won't have to do one thing. God will take care of you. We have many, many testimonies from Africa of stories of people in remote areas of people were coming in and, and, and just a, a, a husband and wife living there, you know, whatever, and they were killing, they're killing, you know, people and, and uh, they were overwhelmed by the onslaught. But when they went outside in the morning, the weapons were lying on the ground and, and there was nobody there. And uh, later on when they caught <laughs> One of them said, what happened? He said, I don't know what, what happened. We came in there, going to take over. But these, these beings all in white, shimmering white, were all around. And we couldn't get near your property. And so we ran seven ways, basically. They didn't say that, but that's what happened. They ran seven ways. Because God will take care of his people. Amen. Can you say amen? Then the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand to. That's why your hand needs to be busy. You know, God doesn't bless the work of your tweets or the work of your posts. He blesses the work of your hands. Can you say amen? And uh, he'll bless you in the land which the Lord your God giveth thee, which get ready, God's gonna give some of you some land and property. 
And uh, not that it would be a burden. It won't be a burden to you, it'll be a blessing to you. You won't need to, you won't need to go looking for it, it will come to you. It will come into your hands. The next moment you'll look and you have it. You don't know how it happened. And everybody will ask you and say, it's a miracle. Look what the Lord has done. If you, if you covenant with him always to give him all the praise and the glory and you keep doing that every single day, he will continue to bless you in your way. The Lord will establish you as a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And then what will happen? All the people of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord and will be afraid of you. Now that's not a fear like, you know, like the mafia. You know what I mean? Oh, don't touch him. He's like a godfather. Don't, you know. Because, I mean, in the world, you know, he's a top gang leader. Be careful, you know, he'll have you hunted down and killed. It's not that kind of a fear. It's a, it's a, it's a reverential awe. They'll be in awe of you. They'll be afraid of you. And they'll actually think twice before they even touch you because they'll say, look, I don't know what's about that person, but they're very connected. Because what they're going to see is every time they thought you were finished, you're still there. And they wonder how. We thought they were done. Don't write anyone off. How many times have you been sitting around? Somebody said, yeah, this person, I tell you, they're done now. And then you look five years later, they're still there. <laughs> God's the one that says it's finished. Amen. It's not over until the fat angel sings. <laughs> Somebody said, is there a fat angel? I, you, know. <laughs> you know, I looked in, in history and there are a couple drawn. And if, if they were, he's probably Italian and his name's Luigi and he eats a lot of pasta. <laughs> the Lord will make you plenteous in goods. In the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give you. In other words, everything you touch, Thank you, Jesus. everything you touch, God will multiply what you have in your hand. It doesn't matter how small it is right now, God will multiply it. Now, somebody said, but pastor, where's the disconnect? Because there's some people, they say, well, I believe that. I believe that nothing happened because the people that actually believe it, be, live it. They live it out in expectation. They live it out every single day. And while they're awake throughout the day, these things are going over and over in the spirits. It's not like, oh, I heard that last Sunday. Why, you know, pastor said that. I remember that two weeks ago. He said something. I wish that would happen for me. My God. I mean, here I am, just sitting all shut down, locked down, and marched up. I just wish all of you sort of leave. There's no expectation there. There's no, there's no faith expectancy. That's what I endeavor to do every Sunday morning is to bring you out of whatever you slipped into in the week and keep you in that place of faith. And keep you in that place of expectancy where you believe in God for the impossible and the miraculous and the supernatural. As we've already announced that this year will be a year, the book of Acts coming alive in the life of every believer. How many been reading through the book of Acts? We'll see what God does in that. Then we can expect all of that in your daily life.
The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heaven, to give rain upon your land in this season. Now, let me just say something. It's not just about natural rain and stuff like that. Florida, there have been times we need rain. We don't really need a lot of rain. I mean, because the water table is high. So, I mean, the little rain and then we got a flood. So, I'm not praying for rain now. But this rain can be interpreted interpreted as the rain of heaven, the rain of the Spirit coming on your life every single day because that rain comes and waters the ground where you sow your seed. And when the, when the rain comes and waters the ground and where you sow your seed, then the harvest springs up. Without the rain, there can be no harvest. Are you with me? It's not just about the planting of the seed. We've got to have the rain. So God will even give us the rain that will come on our seed and the seed will spring up and there will be a harvest that will spring up. Can you say amen? Oh, this is so good. So he'll open his good treasure, have a good rain in this land this season and bless all, everybody say bless all the work of your hands. And you will lend on the many nations and shall not borrow. When you start lending to nations, that's next level. Lending to your neighbor is one thing. And of course, my wife, you know, she knows I can't even lend. I just give it. <laughs> Can I borrow money? I don't lend money. You know. And then I pray about what the Lord wants me to do. But we, we don't loan money from the church. People call it, I, I need a loan, I pay it back. That's the worst thing you can do. Then you end up with 100 people all around the planet. They left the church because now they owe you 10 grand. They didn't pay you back. So you have to pray about, well, okay, what, Lord, what do you want me to give? And then we sow it and then just leave it so that they free. You know. Now, if you're dealing with a heathen, of course, you can lend and charge them interest. You know what I'm saying? That's different. But amongst the family, amongst the body of Christ, it's different. Amongst our own family, it's different. I'm going to say this right now. I hate it when parents say, I'm going to lend the money, but you have to pay me back. I, I hate that because basically what's going to happen is going to become constrained over money. I'll tell you, my son still owes me $30,000 and he hadn't paid back and I gave it to him five years ago. Well, so what has become now the driving force, the split between the family is the fact that you lent. I lent my money. I lent my wife 20000 She hasn't paid me back. Yeah. <laughs> I lent my grandson something. He never paid. I mean... What in the world is this? And you, you, you think I'm making this stuff up. This is, more, this is the greatest problem that we're dealing with today because people do, they, they treat their family like heathen. Some say, well, they're unsaved. It doesn't matter, they're still your family. Look after your family. If you bless, bless your kids. Amen. 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 You don't wait till you die. Your family on the sideline, I just pray he drops dead. Oh God, I can get the inheritance. Lord, kill him. Kill him quickly. My dad's very wealthy. My dad has a huge life insurance policy. He's so tight. He's tighter than, a, you know, whatever. And I uh, and, uh, just pray he dies. You, you think I'm making this up? I ain't making this up. I've seen Christian families operate like that. I ain't giving them money. They don't know what to do with it. It's because you didn't teach them what to do with it. What do you mean they don't know what to do with it? You never trained them. Wow, it went quiet in here. Ooh, I must have hit something. I think I hit a vein. I think I'm scratching in somebody's kid of the box right now. I cannot tell you how many people over the years that we grabbed hold of them, we got a hold of them and paid their full, all their debt, got them out of debt, put them on a budget, showed them how to handle their finances and on, now they're on the other side, they know what to do. 
Because you can be so far in the hole, you don't even know if there's, if there's light at the end of the tunnel. You can be so far underwater, you don't even know what's, like how will I ever get above this? Especially those that have student loan and loans and all these things, you know. And especially with, you know, what's supposed to come. They, they're talking, you know, they get their way 70% tax. But you know what, here's the thing. God will bless you another 70% on top of what you have. So that ultimately, it doesn't really matter. You have to change the way you think. But to your family, to your family, and I see the same with the body of Christ, to your family. Now there are people that are moochers. There's nothing you can do. They are moochers. They like a pair of underwear. They're always on the bum. They go around. (laughs) Always mooching, always mooching. With a mooch mooch here and a mooch mooch there, here a mooch, there a mooch, everywhere a mooch mooch. Oh, McDonald had a farm. He a he a ho. Now, don't keep saying that, but. Because people are lazy, they don't want to work, but they want what everybody else has. I'm gonna say this right now, I have no problem with students coming here and boarding with somebody and staying in the house. But let me tell you, if they're still paying the rent and they're still paying your food and you've been here for three years, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because that means you have, ne- you have not grabbed a word of what I've taught and you become a moocher. You become a professional moocher and all you're doing is you are taking people's kindness and love and you are really abusing it. Amen. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And I don't care if you are called to the ministry. What kind of a ministry are you going to have? Like a vacuum cleaner? Pay your own way and be a blessing. I teach you how to. No excuses. Don't get one thing from this ministry and don't get the other thing. Get everything you need to get. Get even the parts you don't want to get. And I'm only telling you because I love you. I, listen, you know, you have to ask yourself the question. If you're always mooching off somebody, what's the problem here? You know, did I miss a detail? I don't want people still on, on food stamps and on government aid after three, four, five years living in this church. There, there, there's something wrong somewhere. You're missing something. You have not identified with what I'm preaching about. You think I'm here talking about an offering so I can get an offering. Keep your money. Keep your money. I'm trying to get a blessing to you to show you the principles that have allowed us to break free yeah. from the very things that held you back that will hold me back. It's the same thing. God is no respecter of persons. You have to identify with it. Short of me walking up to people in the church and I can't do this, grab all it and go, <laughs> you understand, he wants to bless you. Boom, boom, he wants to bless you. Do you understand what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> which I can't do because people would, I'd be sued for abuse. (laughs) (laughs) What is wrong with you? Boom, boom. I'm your pastor, I'm not gonna tolerate this. Boom. You're gonna have a breakthrough, do you understand me? Boom. Come on. 
I mean, what more do we do to get people to have a breakthrough? I make myself look ridiculous <laughs> so that you can see the miracle. Sorry, I didn't mean to beat you up like that. Don't just sit there and stare at me. I have a camera that flies over your head now. And don't think I can't put one under there too. I'm gonna stick one under there that'll run underneath that thing. Come right and sit on your face and zoom on you. You ask yourself the question, I ask myself the question, what's it gonna take for that person to have a breakthrough? I mean, we pray for you, I pray for you. I don't want you struggling or battling. But if I give you the parameters of the word of God and you don't take it, what do I do? Somebody said, well, I need to go on a fast. Well, then go on a fast. But I'll tell you, you could go on a fast, you can fast until you get so thin, you have to dance around in the shower to get wet. But if you don't take the word of God, if you don't take the word of God, it's not gonna help. You can have a stack of Bibles on your bookshelf, but if you don't take the word and let it come alive in you, it's not gonna help. You have to personalize this for you. You know, when I walk off the platform on Sunday morning after the main event, there's nothing else I could have given. I give everything. I give everything I had. I don't hold anything back. Amen. And I really pray. I've asked the Lord a long time ago because this is important. This, somebody said, well, you're taking long enough with it. Yeah, but it's involving your Monday, your Tuesday, your Wednesday, your Thursday, your Friday, your Saturday. And your Sunday. So if I can't take this time because somebody's going to get offended, as I said earlier, you're probably in the wrong place. The Lord told me to believe that we'd see 300 multi millionaires raised up in this church. And I don't know who they are. Now, somebody said, well, I might not make a millionaire start. It doesn't matter. Anything blessed, more blessed than what you are now is more blessed. So, the Lord will make you the head. And so, listen, take care of your children, please. Bless them with no strings attached. Don't make them walk around you like a servant. And, you know, my dad loaned me this, whatever. Come on. And I will say this husbands, bless your wife. <sighs> you don't need Christmas and an anniversary. The Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above only and not beneath. If you hearken the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And then he's very, very serious about this, and you will not go after. You will not go aside from any of these words which I command you this day to the right hand or the left hand or go after other gods. And well, what, are, what are the other gods? The thing that people are looking for. They make money, possessions, their house, all of these things, they make it their God and they worship that. They go after that. That's their passion. But as you know, the number one goal in this church is souls and the harvest. And listen, as we make souls and the harvest number one, God will look after us. As we take care of God's kingdom, God will take care of anything that we are involved in. 
Heaven and earth will move on your behalf to see that blessing come to pass. You will not go under, you will not go down, you will not drown, you will not sink. The Lord shall cause you, you shall rise up. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fade. You'll tread upon the lion and the adder. You'll trample it underfoot. The Lord is with you. His hand is upon you. He will increase you. He will multiply you. He will bless you all the days of your life. And that's for every single one of you right now. Every single one. And you watching in your home for every single one of you right now. So lift your hands. We're going to pray and then I'm going to receive the morning times and offerings. Father, thank you. This is not my word, but it is your word. As this word came to Adonic and myself all the way back in the early 80s when we were married and we grabbed a hold of it, Lord, and you came and we saw the miraculous and we began to grow daily and weekly and monthly in faith. And, and you never overwhelmed us with what we couldn't handle. You always allowed us to stay within the framework of that which would not crush us, which would not take us under. There were times when we were uh, uh, concerned and uh, our back was against the wall and we, we thought there was no way through, but yet you came through even on that. And there were times that we got ourselves into the problem. We caused the problem ourselves. We were the one that created the financial burden ourselves because of stupidity. Well, mainly mine, because I'm not going to blame my wife, Lord, because you know that that wouldn't be good to blame her because she, she's not to blame. I'm the head of the house, so I'm the one to blame. So I take the blame. And, 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 and when I repented and asked you to help me, you helped me and you helped us and you brought us out and you blessed us. And Lord, I'm asking you to help every person here today with the exact same way. Because you said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, for God gives to all men liberty and abradeth not. And you said you'd give it to us freely. So we ask for wisdom even now, even in the affairs of life for this next week, from our Monday, our Tuesday, our Wednesday, our Thursday, our Friday, our Saturday, between now and next Sunday, the start of the camp meeting, that you will bless your people and increase them and multiply them. Yes. May their attitude not rise and fall with the news. May their attitude not rise and fall with somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody else. May their uh, faith stay exactly in the place of what we are establishing in their hearts even now in Jesus' name. And I pray a blessing upon them. Anybody that's needing, Lord, accommodation or a house of their own, that you would work the miraculous for them. Those that are needing transportation, that you would cause that to happen. Those that are needing, you know, whatever, clothing, bless them. Bless them beyond measure. I pray this even now that all the bills will be paid and there will be over, there will be surplus, there will be overage. Thank you, Lord, not only to take care of their needs, but to help others around about them. And we just thank you for this. I pray for those watching by television, those online right now, that you would do the exact same thing for them. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.